Okay, for our example, let me erase this because I'm going to draw it larger. And let's calculate three things for an object in projectile motion. We're going to take an object and we're going to launch it at speed v naught at an angle theta naught and it's going to go flying through the air and take a path like this it's a parabola and I want to calculate three things I want to calculate the time it takes the object to reach this highest point I'll call it t sub h time to the highest point and then I want to see how high that is how high above launch is that point we'll call it h and the third thing that we'll find is how far sideways does this thing go by the time it goes up and comes back to the same height it was launched from. That's what's called the range. It's the horizontal distance it covers by the time it comes back to the same height. So we want to calculate r, which is this distance right here. Okay, so we have those three things to find. How long it takes to get to the top, how high it goes, and how far sideways it goes by the time it gets back to the height that it was launched from. Here are the equations we have to use. The first thing we're going to be after is the time it takes to get to the top. Okay, so t sub h. The important thing about this point at the top that will let us find that time is that phi y, the y component of velocity, is zero there. So I know that. I know this. I know g, of course. If I know the launch speed and the launch angle, I also know this, so I can solve for the time. So we'll use this first equation. It tells me that Vy, the final y component of velocity, is the initial y component of velocity, I'm going to write it like that, minus g times t. All right, now at the very top, Vy is 0. Up here, Vy is 0. And that makes this the time to the highest point. So I can just calculate it. T sub h, the time to the highest point, is v naught sine theta naught over g. Now notice that this is exactly the same time we found last time for how long it takes a ball in one dimensional freefall to rise to its highest point. There, we tossed something straight up and it went this way, and we found that time, and then it fell again. It's the same time here. This vertical motion here for the projectile is exactly the same as what it was over here. If you launch something with the same vertical component of velocity, v naught y, it's going to reach the top at the same height and the same time as a ball or an object in one dimensional freefall. Okay, so this is just v naught y, same thing we found last time. Now, how high does it go? For that one, we could use either the second or the third equation. I think last time I used the third equation. Let's use the second one this time, just to... Well, you know what? I might have used the fourth equation. But in any case, let's use this, the second one, just to try to mix it up a bit here. So delta y, how high it goes, is half of v naught y plus v y times t. All right, at the top, that is zero. That's the time to the highest point, and that's v naught sine theta naught. So if we substitute all that in, notice what we're going to have. v naught sine theta naught, v naught sine theta naught over g. So we've got a couple things squared over g, and there's a over 2 there. So we end up with v naught squared sine squared theta naught over 2g. This is the square of the initial vertical component of velocity. That's v naught y squared over 2g. Exact same result we had last time. How high does something go? It goes as the square of the initial y component of velocity. Same thing we had last time. All right, last thing we need to find is how far sideways this thing goes by the time it gets way over here. Now, one thing that we need along the way, how long does this take to get back to, I'll call it the ground, t sub g, 
time to get to the ground. Knowing what we know from last time, it's going to be twice the time it took to get to the highest point. If it takes that long to get up to the top, it'll take that long to come back down. So it takes twice the time for the round trip in the vertical direction that it took to just go up. So we'll make use of that to find how far sideways this thing goes. Now we're looking at the sideways motion, so we come up here. We want to know how far sideways it goes. So I use delta x is v naught x. That's v naught cosine theta naught. That is this orange component here. v naught x. It's hypotenuse times cosine because it's adjacent of theta naught. So that's v naught x times t. What time do I put in there? I put the time where I want to know the object's horizontal position. The time when it gets back to the height it was launched from. I'm calling that t sub g. Twice the time to the highest point. Twice this. So I have 2 v naught sine theta naught over g. Okay, now I can use a trig identity here. 2 cosine theta naught sine theta naught is sine of 2 theta naught. And I have a v naught squared. So I end up with v naught squared sine of 2 theta naught over g. That's the horizontal range. That's the maximum distance sideways that a projectile goes if it is launched and returns to the same height. And this, by the way, is where we see that to make an object go as far sideways as you possibly can for a given launch speed, you want to launch it at an angle of 45 degrees because sine is maximized when the argument is 90 degrees. So we want twice theta naught to be 90 degrees. So theta naught needs to be 45 degrees to make delta x, the range, I should set this equal to r, as large as possible. So if you want an object to go as far horizontally as possible, you launch it at 45 degrees. All right, so let's look at some exercises and problems now.